guests and dignitaries, welcome to the new Forest Hills Junior Senior High School. I am Dasha Kirby, proud member of the class of 2018. What started as a dream in 2008 has become a reality, a reality that is made possible by Strategic Thinking Board of School Directors, the leadership of the administrative team, the support of the community, the craftsmanship of contractors, and the patience, might I say abundant patience at times of all. Today we unveil and officially open the final product, a beautiful three-story educational facility equipped with the latest technology and the building design necessary to prepare students for the 21st century. This building not only reflects the tradition of excellence of Forest Hills, but it also ensures academic and athletic excellence in the years to come. We are so happy to share this special moment with you, our Forest Hills immediate family, the heart and soul of our school district. You were here and celebrated with us every step of the journey, from the groundbreaking to the opening. We couldn't imagine planning a ceremony without including you all. On behalf of Mr. Bowser and the Board of the School Directors, I would like to take a moment to thank the Dedication Ceremony Committee. This group worked tirelessly to, pl to plan today's ceremony, and at this time, I would like to ask them to please rise and be recognized. I would like to ask all you to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem and singing of our alma mater. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice.
once again to this exciting moment in Forest Hills history. We are all so glad you could all be here today. I'm Tanner Gavlock. And I'm Taylor Kolka. And we are proud to be here as representatives of the Forest Hills class of 2017. We would like to take a moment to recognize, recognize our platform guests who have made the time in their busy schedules to celebrate with us. At this time, we would like to introduce the platform guests. Please rise to be recognized when your name is called, and please hold your applause until the end. The Honorable Keith Rothfuss, United States House of Representatives. Mr. Edwin Bowser, Superintendent. Ms. Debbie Reeves, Deputy Secretary for Administration, Pennsylvania Department of Education. The Honorable Brian Barbin, Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Mr. Thomas Chernisky, President Commissioner, Cambria County. Mr. Fred Russell, Forest Hill School Board. Mrs. Vanessa Sorrell, Director of Education. Dr. Pete Schoner, Associate Provost and Professor, St. Francis University and Forest Hills Class of 1975. Mr. B.J. Smith, Cambria County Commissioner. Mr. Ethan Gabani, Forest Hills Class of 2013. Senator Wayne Langerholk, Pennsylvania State Senate. Reverend Joe Staines, Forest Hills Ministerium. Mr. Kurt Bassis, Senior High School Principal. Mr. Edward Alexander, Junior High School Principal. Mr. Galen George, Forest Hills School Board. Mrs. Deborah Petrunik, Forest Hills School Board. Mr. John Bob, Forest Hills School Board. Mr. Robert McTavish, Forest Hills School Board. Mrs. Tracy Helsel, Forest Hills School Board. Dr. Richard Knabel, Forest Hills School Board. Mrs. Corinna Long, Forest Hills School Board. Dr. Timothy Andre, Forest Hills School Board. M Mr. Chris Riegerd, Forest Hills Business Manager. Mr. Lucas Jacobs, Elementary Principal. Mrs. Claudia Mihal, School Psychologist and Director of Special Education. Ms. Dasha, Dasha Kirby, Class of 2018. Mr. Ed Cernick, Cambria County Controller. Mr. Rick Varner, Magistrate. Mr. Dave Esposito, Eccles Architecture. Ms. Laureen Bensey, on behalf of United States Senator Pat Toomey. Mr. Ron Repack, Solicitor. Mr. Matt Hoffman, Solicitor. Mr. Mike Passer, PSEA. Dr. Laura Miller, Junior High School Dean of Students. Mr. Brian Costin, Senior High School Assistant Principal. Mrs. Marion Boyer, Food Service Director. Mrs. Amy Kakavar, Forest Hills Education Support Professional. Mrs. Lori Fessler, Forest Hills Secretary. Mr. Mike Seidel, PJ Dick Incorporated. Mr. Mark Meckler, PJ Dick Incorporated. Mr. Mike Fiore, Leonard S. Fiore Incorporated. Mr. Trevor Burkett, Service Employees International Union. Mr. Larry Selmer, Elementary Assistant Principal. Please join me in recognizing our platform guests. Please be seated. Reverend Joe Staines serves as the pastor of Mount Hope United Methodist Church, as well as the head of the Forest Hills Ministerium. His many areas of service include membership of his church, church conferences, Global Ministries Board. We are so glad to welcome Reverend Staines to formally dedicate the new Forest Hills Junior Senior High School. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Staines. This is a special day. <clears throat> you may not always recognize it for what it is, but take a mental note, especially you who are students here. Remember that you were here today. You'll be glad, you'll be proud. When you look back on the day that this building was dedicated and prepared for you and for those who come after you. There's a verse in one of the Psalms that says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Now that can mean somebody's home. It can mean a community building like this one. It also can mean building human lives. At any level and at any application, the word remains the same, unless the Lord builds the house. The builders labor in vain. It's my privilege to represent 
the diverse faith communities of the Forest Hills Ministerium, and the faith-based groups that work among the people of our school system to nurture them in their faith and character. <clears throat> we want to remember what buildings of education are primarily for. And first and foremost, is to cultivate the knowledge and the ability of young people preparing for adulthood to use their skills, their God-given skills and responsibilities of adult life. You don't take that knowledge and ability lightly. You want to learn to read, learn to analyze and understand the world around you. We have some representatives, government representatives here. It's a good moment to note that nobody can sustain a democratic society without a literate population of voters. They don't stand up for long. We need those skills. A second of four standard features of American schools in particular is to develop our physical skills. Whether it's in the gym, in a standard or required class, or whether it's in athletics where particular skills and abilities, disciplines, teamwork, respect for rules, respect for opponents, and the ability to work together are cultivated within us. A third component of a good school system is the upholding and developing of culture, music, and the arts. They give balance and joy and perspective to our lives. It's a lasting contribution we can inherit and pass on. And the fourth of those standard functions in a school is the communication and association that we develop in organizations and clubs and special interest groups, from forensics to school media, service groups, specialty clubs, student leadership. They help us learn how to do things together and prepare us to make contributions to each other and to those around us. Those four things go into student life. I've been invited here to represent the ministerium and the faith community. And that's the fifth element. The fifth of the five that make education complete. The element that grounds our lives, and gives us values to live by. The element that gives us an enduring sense of worth and purpose. That gives us courage, the ability to overcome our fears to do what must be done to give us compassion for others, that we live not to ourselves alone, to give us the character to endure and to do redemptive things with our lives to the very end. This is faith, the fifth element, faith in God, the source of our authority and our values, the source of our redemption from our mistakes, and we need it the source of our strength to live out our purpose for good. History is strewn with the stories of people who excelled in one or more of those classic four areas of education, whose potential often left us in awe, whose lives somewhere along the line plateaued out in adulthood and missed out on what they might have become. History is also rife with stories of people whose early achievements were not especially remarkable in those areas, those classic areas, but whose life outcome was fruitful. More than that, redemptive. And sometimes more than that, heroic. People who, for the good of their lives of faith, offered to this world a difference that was noted and felt throughout generations. Some of those famous champions that we've told each other about through the years, Abe Lincoln, Clara Barton, Martin Luther King, John Glenn, and many, many more who were known for achievements, who had the character to complete those achievements from their faith. And the not so famous, 
the firefighters, the police, the military heroes, the nurses, the EMTs, and the counselors, the engineers and medical researchers who made our lives safer, whose faith gave them the conviction and the strength to go the extra mile to protect and rescue and heal other people. Here at Forest Hills, we're dedicating a facility carefully, painstakingly designed to make the best of those first four. Now, as a public school, it's not their place under our current law to endorse that fifth element of faith and character, but it is the responsibility of all schools, including the public ones, under our law to provide for the free exercise of faith cultivation, as our Constitution puts it. And the Forest Hills School District has a long and prominent track record of doing that admirably. So many students want to grow in spirit and faith, and their parents want this for them. The community wants it for them. And the diversity of our faith communities work and pray hard to make it so that all five elements of life can complement each other to a complete and wondrous contribution to humanity and tribute to God. And here at Forest Hills, they can and they do. That hospitality for faith development is here. It complements those four elements and provides that fifth. For just a few examples, young life is welcomed here and touches a lot of lives in their spiritual growth. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes does its part and draws many an athlete and those who mentor them to become all that God made them to be. The student-initiated annual baccalaureate for graduating classes involves the community ministerium in a spiritual celebration of every graduating class that is voluntarily attended here by a percentage of seniors far above the, nar the norm, the national norm. Whatever we achieve elsewhere, that fifth element of faith can be taken by today's students and tomorrow's helpers and heroes taken to heart. They're all here. Even before the building was conceived and constructed so well, those things are here. Those are the things that build our character. This is a special place. And you're all here in a special time. This time and place warrants our dedication and our celebration. Let us do so. Let us pray. O oh Lord, have you, as you have provided the calmness of the time in which we live and the vision of the minds that conceived this place, the material and the means and the teamwork to make it so, all those things together to build this wonderful place. As you have inspired the hearts of people throughout our communities in their roles of work and leadership, so we lift this facility and this school system before you. Let it be dedicated to build the learning, the growth, the wholeness, and the redemption of all who are touched by it in mind and body and spirit. All who are blessed to be here now and in times to come. In your son's name we pray, amen. And now just as a greeting for you on behalf of the ministerium, very brief one, I borrow the words of another contributor to our culture, person of faith from my youth, actor named Charlton Heston, 
was a hero of all kinds of movies, from religious to science fiction. I'm going to borrow the form, but not the substance of the punchline of one of his great movies. When he said, no, in new substance, what I'll say, God bless you. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Staines. <clears throat> we are excited to welcome to the stage the Honorable Keith Rothfuss, United States House of Representatives from Pennsylvania's 12th Congressional District. Representative Rothfuss was elected to the United States Congress in 2012. He serves as Vice Chairman of the Subcommittee on Financial Institutions and Consumer Credit for the 115th Congress. When in Pennsylvania, he resides in Allegheny County with his wife and six children. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Keith Rothfuss. Thank you, and it is a real privilege to be here with you today to congratulate you, this community, everybody involved in the construction of this magnificent facility, and to ce celebrate with you, because today marks a new beginning. And if I might just take the opportunity with the time I've been given to direct most of our, my remarks to the young people who are here, and what this building represents for you. This is just a building, but it's a gift to which you've been given. This building is not going to give you good grades. This building is not going to teach you about life. It's not going to teach you to respect. It's not going to figure out your calling in life. That belongs to you. That belongs to your peers, your parents, and your teachers. This building can be a tool to that end. In that sense, it's a tremendous gift for you. And I want you to reflect on that and to be thankful for that because there are many kids in this world who do not, do not have this kind of gift. We're about to reflect this weekend on Memorial Day. There have been close to 1.4 million Americans who gave up their lives so that you can live and learn in freedom. That's a legacy that has been handed to you, and your community has combined that legacy with the gift of this building. You may not realize it now, but our country desperately needs you. We need your youth, we need your idealism, and we need your energy. And we get to reflect this weekend on those who gave everything for you to be here. We also have another anniversary that is going to come on Monday that folks may not be aware of, but it's the 100th birthday of President Kennedy. And it's always good to reflect on President Kennedy's words, particularly in his inaugural address. We talked about his time and the challenges that the world faced then. And how we saw the Iron Curtain hung across Europe and the world. And the atheistic communist regimes suppressing millions of people. And President Kennedy reflected on the difference of our country and our founders and how he recognized, and the founders recognized, that our rights do not come from the generosity of the state, but they come from God. And President Kennedy called a new generation to service, to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. So I need you young people to dig deep, to understand that you're here for a purpose, that you've been given this wonderful gift, that you can use it to make this world a much better place. So congratulations, Forest Hills. May God bless you in your work, 
May God bless who come into this building and may he grant you the inspiration to live fulfilling lives in service. Go Rangers. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Rothfuss. I'm now pleased to introduce Senator Wayne Langerhoek, who serves in the Pennsylvania State Senate as the representative of the 35th District. Prior to his election in 2016, Senator Langerhoek was a Cambria County Assistant District Attorney, head of the Cambria County Heroin Task Force, and served as a Richland Township Supervisor. He's a lifelong resident of Cambria County. Please join me in welcoming Senator Wayne Langerhoek. Good afternoon. Thank you uh, for having me. It's always a pleasure to get back uh, to this school. I was here back before all of this was, was completed and toured the facility with your superintendent when it was just a shell. And what strikes me from that day, from those tours, was how meticulous and how much attention to detail was paid to everything within this building. Uh, the vision of the school board as well as Superintendent Bowser is truly second to none. And I commend you all for your, for your undying work to make this a reality. I know how difficult it is, especially with certain budgetary constraints. And the fact that you were able to set aside such a large amount of money as a down payment on this building is, is truly remarkable. And in a time, uh, I'm going to head to Harrisburg here probably for the full month of June as we prepare our budget negotiations. And you, you hear from, from people in Harrisburg how uh, public education, uh, you know, how it's, t it's not for taken for granted, but how it's, you know, they don't pay attention to money. Uh, that's clearly not the case here. This, is, this should be the shining example that all schools should aspire to. What you've done here and what this building is and what this building will become over the many years that it will stand is a testament to your leadership. So I thank you and commend you. Another thing that struck me as we toured this facility and saw that its completion is, is what you students will have the opportunity to do here and what you will be able to take advantage of and what, was, what is given to you with respect to life, general life skills. And we were in the upstairs lab where your superintendent showed me the places where you can uh, test tensile strength and, and, and the amount of opportunities that you will have in this building will lead you far, far from here. And we hope that you come back and come back and give to the community as the board sitting here before you has given to you. And as it's been said, it is a gift. It is truly a gift. Many students will graduate from here. They'll be prepared for life. And they'll owe that to the leadership of the superintendent and this board. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Langerhold. We now have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Pete Schoner, who serves as the Associate Provost at St. Francis University. Dr. Schoner has held various administrative and faculty positions at St. Francis University in the Chemistry, Mathematics, and Physical Science Departments, as well as St. Francis Academic Affairs. Dr. Schoner is a current Forest Hills resident and a proud graduate of the Forest Hills class of 1975. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Pete Schoner. Thank you for inviting me here today to speak on behalf of Forest Hills alumni. Uh, you should all be proud that you're the charter administration, charter faculty, staff, and students of this new building. You'll always be able to say for years that you were here 
when this school first opened. As an alumni representative, I, I don't think I can speak on behalf of all the alumni of Forest Hills, but I'll kind of give you some of the story of my own family. Uh, we're lifelong residents of this school district. My mother and father both graduated from here. Mother in 1941, she's 93 now and still living. Father graduated in 1943, he's 91 and still living. My uncle Ivan graduated in 1929. I'm told that was the year that Adams Township School District High School first opened, the one that just kind of left. Um, so he was, he graduated from that school. Evan's gift was his art. Um, as I walked into the building today and saw uh, some of the mining and rail pictures, he, he would sketch those. And I can only imagine he got that inspiration from Adams Township High School and the teachers in that building. A story my father always tells. So he graduated in 1943, his senior year in the fall of 1942. You probably know what was going on in this country from your history class. We were in the midst of World War II. All the seniors were called into uh, the auditorium in that school, probably like this, and asked to take a test, senior males, to join the US Navy as an officer. My dad tells me three of them passed the test. And he ended up going on to serve his country and um, was an ensign in the US Navy he ended up using the GI Bill afterward to graduate with a mining engineering degree. His four brothers and he all served his country. And thankfully they all came back alive. And again, I, I can only think it's this Forest Hills, well, Adams Township at that time. These buildings and these teachers who inspired them to, do, to serve their country and then go on to do such great things. Um, kind of where I'm going with this, again, I'm telling you kind of my family history through some of this, is that four generations have gone through this school district. So that's the first one. that They're called the greatest generation, and they probably are. Um, the next generation, myself and my three siblings all graduated from here. My sister Barbara Kissel in the audience here, uh, Val of Victorian in 1970, and a uh, retired teacher from the district. Uh, my brother David, a physician. My brother John, an endodontist, also graduated. My wife and I graduated in 1975 with uh, Mr. Riegerd, who might have had something to do with financing this building, get, arranging the financing. Mr. Smay, a retired teacher there in the audience, and Mrs. Boyer, who plans all these wonderful meals here at the school. Um, our, our senior year, 1975, okay, um, so now we're Forest Hills. My sister came in as Adam Summerhill High School, and she left as Forest Hills. We came in to Forest Hills High School. Our senior year started with a teacher's strike that actually went on pretty long into October. We actually wanted to get back to school. It, it was that long. Um, and one of the reasons we wanted to get back to school is we thought we had a pretty good football team. And as soon as the strike ended, we did win four games in a row and lost one. So we, we actually ended up the season at four and five because we had the forfeits in there. That team was kind of exciting because there was a new coach, 23-year-old new teacher in the district. Um, and, and brought some excitement into the high school. I, I don't know if you know where I'm going with that, but uh, how many years later now? 43 years later, with 355 wins and lifetime contribution to football award, uh, Mr. Bailey was that 23-year-old coach who came in our senior year. Uh, Mr. Bailey, Again, I, you're hearing excellence in the arts, excellence in academics, I, I hope. 
he, during his era, was kind of excellence is the tr tradition, and it extended to athletics. And by the way, I don't know if the baseball team has left yet, but good luck today uh, going over to the district championship with Mr. Carpenter and the track and field team with Mr. Hunter down in Shippensburg. So good luck to all of them. Fast forward to the next generation and my three children, our three children, Katie Kelly and Matt came through and benefited from all the teachers and uh, the school that was, again, next door. The thought that comes to my mind, again, showing the excellence of Forest Hills, my daughter Kelly graduated in 2005. And they mentioned that I'm at St. Francis University. Well, it was really kind of interesting and peculiar that year, six Forest Hills graduates all came to St. Francis University in chemistry. Uh, sometimes we don't have six chemistry majors in one year, and we had them all from one high school. Well, 12 years later, I look back at that group, and my daughter Kelly is a DO, a doctor of op OD, a doctor of optometry. Um, there's a, two PhDs in there. There's an osteopathic medicine doctor, and there's a doctor of pharmacology out of the five, and the other one has two master's degrees. And that's not even to say about other of their classmates. There's one that's an MD, PhD, another that's an MD, a doctor of chiropractic medicine, and a doctor of physical therapy. So my daughter's telling me out of her class, she thinks there's nine doctors. That's incredible that this is coming from a small school. It's, it's the work ethic of the students. It's the rigor that the teachers uh, give, and, and it's these buildings also. Um, so on to the fourth generation. My grandson Noah is in pre-K over at the other school building. He graduated last week. He actually knows this school better than I do because he comes in with Mrs. Livermore and her sister Jen who watch him when he's not in pre-K. Again, the excellence at Forest Hills is evident to me in the pre-K program. Many schools don't have it. And then the quality of the program is, is just unbelievable. So at their pre-K graduation, all of the, he's four years old in school, but he had to go up to the microphone um, and they had to say what they're gonna be when they grow up. So you have to hear these. Seven wannabe police officers four construction workers, three rock stars, two veterinarians, two nail technicians, two secret agents, one each, teacher, dentist, soldier, artist, ballerina, gymnast, spy, superhero, and Hulk. <laughs> Some of them will probably change their minds before they get into this auditorium. And hey, we do need more police officers, construction workers, and nail technicians. And you can never have enough rock stars, superheroes, and even hulks. I guess the good news for you, the students, here at Forest Hills, where excellence is the tradition, here where artists are inspired, where civil servants are encouraged, and where doctors are educated, you students can do anything and go anywhere you want. Just yesterday, I spoke with Ann Heinzroth, a colleague at St. Francis, who directs our Upward Bound program. And by the way, if you don't know about that program, it's a wonderful support program for high school students to encourage them to go to college. Ann visits many schools. And when I said I was coming to Forest Hills today, she said, oh, I was just here this week. And, and right away, she started beaming. The words she used, that this, beautiful, this building is beautiful, gorgeous, and stunning. Okay, good adjectives. I, I pressed her a little bit to be more descriptive. Because, and I said, how does it compare to other new schools? She said, well, they're also beautiful and nice. But what she felt here that was different is a warmth. And then she said, she likes how we captured, or you captured 
the history of the district. She, she particularly liked the pictures of the Dunlow and the Salix and the 42 and Summer Hill schools there. So she's not seen anything like that. And I don't go into schools as often as she does, but I thought that was a very nice um, description of the new school. So congratulations, Mr. Bowser, school board, and administration and teachers to have the bold vision for this new school. I'm looking forward to when Noah comes, seven years from now, he should, he should be in this school. And thank you also for the opportunity to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schoner. 2013 valedictorian of Forest Hills High School, Ethan Gabani, will receive a bachelor's degree <clears throat> this Sunday from Cornell University, where he'll be recognized as the valedictorian of the School of Hotel Administration. In addition to serving as a teaching assistant at Cornell, Ethan has authored several articles published and featured in USA Today on the hospitality and airline industries. Most recently, Ethan joined Ed Hardy, founder of 84 Lumber and Nemecolon Woodlands Resort, as a real estate development and investment analysis consultant. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ethan Gabani. Thank you, Taylor and Tanner, for that kind introduction. Superintendent Bowser, principals Vassis and Alexander, board members, faculty and staff, students, and distinguished guests, Thank you so much for inviting me to join you on this special occasion. I must admit, it takes a lot of courage to invite someone who studied real estate and now works in that industry to join you for the opening of what is, in essence, a real estate asset. I can't help but think back to my first project management course at Cornell, where we learned the basics of real estate development, budget, scope, and schedule. Budget, of course, refers to the cost of developing a building. Scope has to do with the extent and the quality to which it will be completed. Schedule, as you might imagine, refers to the timeline in which the project gets built. My professor told us shortly after introducing these three concepts that you must, with every project, choose two. The district chose quite intelligently to dedicate the time necessary to plan develop and construct a building that would effectively serve the needs of the students of this building for decades to come. So while the building may have opened later than some school officials would have preferred, the facility we dedicate today has been built to the highest standards and delivered nearly $1 million under budget. In the real estate industry, this is practically unheard of. But since new schools open all the time, what makes this one so special? While many districts pick plans out of a catalog, Forest Hills chose to have the building custom designed. This allowed for the classrooms, laboratories, common spaces, and support areas to be uniquely tailored to the needs of their end users. In addition, the design team was able to infuse the region's storied history, as many of my colleagues here have said, into the building through clever material choices, art installations, and even architectural elements of previous buildings that have been seamlessly incorporated into the new design. Beyond the design of the building, though, the opening of the new Forest Hills Junior Senior High School represents the first time in our district's history that we have a fully centralized campus here in Sidman. While that may seem like a minor distinction, it opens up a range of academic opportunities for students. After all, the mission of this district is to provide the best student-centered education so that all students acquire and apply the knowledge and skills to succeed in an ever-changing world. This new building allows for that like never before. Now, accelerated students can get access to high school classes sooner, allowing them to complete their graduation requirements earlier and dedicating more time to pursuing advanced placement and collegiate courses 
right here in this building. As the district continues to make efforts to customize the curriculum to each student's unique needs, students in this building will have access to a broader range of faculty members better equipped to supplement online and alternative classrooms that expand the curricular offerings available to students even further. This building marks a great turning point for the district and will facilitate the delivery of a truly world-class education. But as others on this stage have alluded to, a building's role is limited to that, facilitating the delivery of education. It is the people inside, the teachers, who will continue to make this district one of the most sought after public school districts in the state. Perhaps a personal anecdote would help this message hit home. When I got to Cornell, I was surrounded by peers who attended the most prestigious private, <coughs> charter, preparatory, and boarding schools in the world. There was a piece inside of me that wondered, that, that truly wondered, whether someone who came from a modest upbringing in western Pennsylvania and was the product of its public school system could truly compete against students like these. But as Taylor and Tanner alluded to, I'm headed back to Cornell tonight to graduate as a valedictorian of my class there this weekend. I say that not to highlight my accomplishments, but to emphasize that the knowledge I gained here and the work ethic instilled in me by my parents, but reinforced through the educators of this district, set me up not just to compete, but to thrive at a very competitive school. My hope in the years to come is that this building makes the lives of these educators easier that it allows them to transform the minds of students that come through these halls just as they did before, but with the best and the latest technology in a truly state-of-the-art facility. I have no doubt that they will, and I'm excited for them, for the students, for the families, and for all the residents of this district who will benefit from this building and the graduates that it continues to produce. Congratulations, Forest Hills. Thank you, Mr. Gabani. I would, like, I would now like to welcome Mr. Thomas Chernisky, who serves as President Commissioner for Cambria County. Before becoming a County Commissioner, Mr. Chernisky was a Cambria County jur Jury Commissioner for two and a half terms. He is a lifelong resident of Cambria County and is very active in the community, including being involved in numerous charitable organizations. Please join me in welcoming Commissioner Thomas Chernisky. Good afternoon. Uh, the Forest Hills dedication, it seems like not so long ago I can remember the groundbreaking and the, the tour this past January, February of this remarkable building. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Bowser, uh, the Forest Hills administration, the students, faculty, and staff for allowing us to participate in your dedication this afternoon. Forest Hills has a facility that will provide students with the ability to acquire knowledge, skill, and support that they deserve for the 21st century. This new junior high school features state-of-the-art classrooms equipped with the latest technology, professionally engineered performing arts venue, and athletic and educational facilities to showcase their talent. This building will be an asset not just for your students, but for the community in the Forest Hills region. The Cameron County Board of Commissioners, myself, Commissioner Smith, and Commissioner Wissinger cannot be here today. We want to thank you, the board, the administration, the faculty, and the students, and commend you for your hard work and your persistence. Your efforts will leave a legacy for future generations in the Forest Hills community, our region, and the county. This building will help ensure that our children and grandchildren will receive a quality education to compete in an ever-changing economy. Today is a great day, and we want to say congratulations. Job well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chernisky. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Brian Barbin, who represents the 71st District. He was born in Johnstown and is the fourth generation of his family to provide legal services in Western Pennsylvania. Mr. Barbin has served in each of the three branches of state government. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Brian Barbin. Good afternoon. It is an honor to be here. It is incredible that you have this 
uh, group of people here to celebrate a de dedication. I want to thank uh, Reverend Staines because he really put his finger on why we're all here and what's really important about today. There's always going to be moments in time when things are broken down. 138 years ago, the South Fork Dam broke. It wiped out Johnstown. My grandfather was nine years old. Somebody threw a rope to him. I'm here today. I got to marry an uh, excellent ranger. And uh, it's now made my life blessed. I want to just make a couple points up and then uh, I'll just say thank you for being part of the celebration. Number one, the American flag is the reason we're all here. And just like the dedication that Reverend Staines talked about, 2,800 years ago, the greatest nation in the world was Israel. They dedicated a temple. Solomon became the head of the most prosperous nation that ever lived. And, it, and that matters because we now have a facility here that exactly the same thing can happen. In Chronicles, what it says is, after they feasted for eight days and celebrated the facility, um, Solomon said a prayer, and it's in Chronicles 7, 14 through 20, but it has a, it's a two-edged sword. What it said was, number one, if we turn ourselves back to God, and then he will heal the land and he will make everything right. But it goes on to say that if you have the facility like they had, the greatest temple in the world, but if you turn away, then what he'll do is disperse you among all nations. We're that nation. William Penn came 333 years ago, and he said, I'm not going to be persecuted anymore, and no one else that lives here will be. He gave that to Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania gave it to the nation. So the only question today that remains, you have a facility, you have people that have died to give you the right to live in a country that's free. So the only question is, are you willing to do your part? Because everybody has a role to play. If you do your part, if you respect those people that have died, everybody has them in their family. People forget to ask, do we have members of our family that fought? Do we have members in our family that died? We all do. You just have to ask about them. It's hard to remember people past the fourth generation, but they're in your family. They're in everybody's history. Remember that they died for you and do your part, and you will have the heart of excellence, which is what God calls everybody to have. And at that moment, God will bless the Four Stills Rangers and all those people that come out of the school. God bless Four Stills. God bless the Four Stills Rangers. Thank you, Mr. Barbin. State Senator Scott Wagner called Mr. Bowser this morning to wish the district good luck and personally apologize for being unable to attend today due to delayed travel plans caused by the inclement weather. We thank Senator Wagner for his best wishes. We are so pleased to introduce Ms. Debbie Reeves, who is the Deputy Secretary for Administration in the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Prior to coming to the Department of Education, she was employed by the Democratic Appropriations Committee in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives as the Senior Budget Analysis and IT Director. Previously, Deputy Secretary Reeves worked as both a public school administrator in charge of district technology and as a high school teacher. Please join me in welcoming Deputy Secretary Reeves. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to go off script for a second and say great speech, heartfelt by Representative Barbin. And I just want to tell you how impressed I am with the whole atmosphere here today. I, I really wasn't expecting it. Um, the love of community, the, the students, the joy and encouragement on education from your superintendent to your school board, parents and community, 
really that's what great education's about. So um, you've had some great speakers here today, so I just ask you to lower your expectations just a little bit. I, not quite as polished as everybody else. Um, either way, thank you for inviting me here to share your special day and your grand opening ceremony. I, I know you must be so proud. Um, this state-of-the-art building has really come to fruition because of your community and your school board and your teachers and your staff and your students who were committed to make this happen. You were willing to put in long hours and make sacrifice for nine years. You were willing to fight for your commitment to education and you worked together to make your dream a reality. As you know, I'm here on behalf of um, both Governor Wolf and Secretary Rivera, the Secretary of Education and my boss. Um, both the Governor and Secretary Rivera are champions for education and committed to providing support to prepare students to be college and career ready. The Governor, along with the legislature, secured historic increases in education over the past couple of years. This combined dedication, along with remarkable local support to school districts, helps to achieve the universal goal of guiding children to a bright future. So when I first was invited here and I thought, what can I share with you? Um, I did a little research and looked at some publications um, on construction. And the research that I read shows that new construction and updated school facilities have a positive effect on home prices in the area, attract families with children to attend the schools, have a significant effect on improved school attendance and lowering dropout rates, increase job satisfaction, increase the success of retaining and recruiting teachers, improve student behavior, although I haven't seen anything that indicates that you need that so far anyway, um, increases community support, and most importantly, has a positive impact on student achievement. And speaking of achievement, um, I want to take a moment also to congratulate all of you, um, your superintendent, parents, community, everybody, um, for having been recently recognized for student academic performance and college preparedness in a national ranking by US News and World Report. So your continuing commitment to providing the best possible education and environment for your children has been nationally recognized, and I congratulate you on that. So support for education, providing a safe learning environment, and ensuring rich learning experiences are really important factors in showing children that they're important. As Benjamin Franklin said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Um, and we all know how he counted his pennies, or so the story goes. Um, but it's wonderful to be here, to experience your investment, your sacrifice for your children. The dream that you had nine long years ago has become a reality. I'm sure there were struggles along the way. Times you probably wanted to give up. Times when the obstacles just seemed insurmountable. But you fought on anyway. And as Babe Ruth once said, this is my last quote, I promise, um, it's hard to beat a person who never gives up. You never gave up, and we're all here to celebrate. Thank you so much for letting me share your day today. Thank you, Ms. Reeves. We are so honored to welcome to the podium our Director of Education, Mrs. Vanessa Sorrell. Mrs. Sorrell has served Forest Hills School District in a variety of roles over the past 36 years, including Librarian, Director of Curriculum, and Director of Education. Please join me in welcoming Director of Education, Vanessa Sorrell. We'd like to take a moment to recognize the Forest Hills staff retirees in the audience today. These men and women represent those individuals who have retired since 2008 and were here as we move through the building project process. We thank them for their service and we ask them to please stand at this time and be recognized.
Oh, come on. Do I understand that? It is my honor and privilege to introduce our next speaker. I could describe his many academic degrees and the many positions he's held over the years, but I want you to catch a glimpse of the man I know and respect. For the last 10 years, he and I have worked side by side. He pushed me when I needed pushed. He cried with me when I felt defeated. He encouraged me when I was frustrated. He celebrated with me when I was victorious. And best of all, he made me laugh. And he laughed with me when we needed to laugh. No one has put more time and effort into the success we are celebrating today than this man. Please welcome my colleague and my very dear friend, Mr. Edwin Bowser. Superintendent of Schools of the Forest Hills School District. <laughs> well, I promised I didn't want to get all choked up before my speech. I went over it 20 times, and each time I got all choked up. You know, I've done this many, many times in my 36 years as an educator, speaking to individual senators and students and principals and legislators and so forth. This was the toughest, and this is the toughest today. Um, I'd like my students, when I say my and my staff, to stand up, just for a minute, to stand up. And I want my elementary, by the way, my elementary students, pre-K, first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth grade and my staff are watching this live. That's a statement for the technology available in this building. So they're watching all of us. I'd like them to stand up. I'd like my students to stand up for one moment, for 30 seconds. Look around because this is for you. Have a seat. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to personally thank all of you for attending our dedication ceremony. Your attendance is certainly appreciated. Wow, isn't it great? I mean, I sat here and the day has finally come, it's finally arrived to showcase our amazing new building. I'm so glad you're here to share this moment. In my entire career, I have never been so excited. Personally for me, I've been preparing for this day for over seven years. As I sat in my office to write my final speech associated with this building project, it brought back memories of a movie that I watched over 27 years ago with my family. The 1989 movie, Field of Dreams, is about Ray, an Iowa farmer played by Kevin Costner. In the beginning of the movie, Ray is walking through one large cornfield when he hears a voice whispering, if you build it, he will come. Through much soul searching, Ray comes to understand that if he builds the baseball field, then the long deceased members of the 1919 Chicago White Sox baseball team will come. After weeks of worry and desperate fa desperately facing financial ruin, he plows over the cornfield to create the baseball diamond in his vision. Ray's dream is realized when the field is, com is complete and the baseball players do indeed magically appear. It was a momentous and heartfelt warming event for Ray one that reaffirmed his commitment to believing in his hopes and dreams. The quote from the movie, if you build it, he will come, resonates with individuals from our era and those words of inspiration reflect the knowledge that if you work hard in life towards a goal, if you put thought and energy into a project and find a true purpose, you will, likelihood, you will increase the likelihood of success. 
I share with all of you Ray's story because our story is much like Ray's. In, it began in May of 2008. 18 individuals met with Superintendent bon, Don Bailey in the district boardroom and discussed the possibility of constructing this beautiful state-of-the-art facility in which we are seated. Like Ray's journey in the field of dreams, our journey was filled with many trials and tribulations. We encountered naysayers along the way and overcame numerous obstacles. One of the most disappointing events in my professional career occurred on February 26, 2014. That day was the day when the initial construction bids were open and we realized we were over budgeted by eight million dollars. It would have been very easy for the school board and for us to throw up our hands and say the dream is over. But we forged ahead to overcome this major setback and quiet the disbelievers who said this day would never come. Today has arrived. Today the journey ends. The rewards of the construction of a junior senior high school like none other in Pennsylvania. And we've done it without raising taxes for 23 years saving $20 million over the last 15 years to put on a down payment, and bringing the project under budget by almost $800,000. Together, the board, the community, and our staff have worked hard over the last eight years to create, create a bright future for our students and open the doors so all students can meet their individual career aspirations and be successful. The new building features a complex that will serve as a home for the performing arts and a venue for all athletic teams and sporting events. Various community meetings will be scheduled in the facility as well as providing public access to the first floor library and cafeteria. Individuals and organizations will be able to use a large group instruction area that is designed to be flexible to accommodate the needs of daily student instruction and evening meetings and activities. The new gym facility, located adjacent and connected to the existing field house, creates a comprehensive athletic complex. The gym will function as a physical education classroom, as a performing venue, as a community resource. The gym consists of one large 1,000 seat competition gym, which has already been used by the PIAA to host interscholastic events. The Performing Arts Center Auditorium comfortably seats 760 people with professional quality acoustic and lighting features. The auditorium has already hosted several student performances as well as served as the venue for community events such as the Warrior Walk Rock Concert, Veterans Benefit Concert. The second and third floor serve as the heart of the building contains the majority of the academic classrooms. The Language, Arts and Social Studies departments are housed on the second floor and the math and science departments on the third. School safety is a priority. The new building has a safe school's entrance that limits access to the building, except through the administrative office. Visitors are held in the entrance pending verification before visitors gain access to the building. The new junior senior high school contains many other benefits for students, teachers, and the community at large. Making this school, our school, a functional facility where there is something for everyone. I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank the many individuals who were instrumental in making our dream come true. To PJ Dick, representatives Mark Meckler and Mike Seidel, Equus Architectural Firm representatives John Pappas and Davis Bozzetto, and all the contractors, especially the Ellis Fiore Group, thank you for your hard work and your dedication to complete this project. I know we were demanding. I know we were involved, but we have a tradition here at Forest Hills, and it is truly a tradition of excellence in our district, and you have certainly lived up to our standard. To the students, your patience during the transition process set the tone for all successful, for a sex, successful excuse me, second semester. To senior high students particularly, I thank you for your patience during your high school careers. This building is a testament to the potential we all see in you. Every day you accomplish things that make us proud to have you as our students. And for that, I thank you. 
to the faculty and staff members for your dedication and patience during this process. You have done what seemed impossible, combining two schools, moving mid-year, and creating a new home for our students. You selfishly moved equipment and supplies into a new building. You were inconvenienced many times throughout this year. I can honestly attest, and then I can honestly say, that I don't know of any other faculty who would have tolerated so much change with so little or no complaints. It was truly a team effort, and for that, I thank you. To the maintenance and cafeteria staff, you've adjusted positively, excuse me, positively to the new environment. You were open-minded and participated in days of training to ensure that we could successfully transition into the new state-of-the-art building and cafeteria. And especially Dan Lester and Ed Byer, who monitored every single aspect of this construction project, from assisting in the design, to modifying plans, participating in countless meetings to represent the district and to ensure we would have a quality final project. For that, I thank you. To the members of the school board who had the vision, foresight, and determination to construct this building, the hard work and time you invested into the planning and meetings will benefit our children for many years. I would especially like to thank the construction committee, Mr. Fred Russell, Mr. Galen George, and Mr. Robert McTavish, who kept me grounded and focused on our goal. I thank each and every one of you for your commitment to this district. To Kurt Vassis and Ed Alexander, our principals, who worked tirelessly to combine two buildings into two school, two buildings into two schools under one roof, I thank you for your time and commitment to work out the details of this vision. To Chris Reekard, our business manager, you have done the impossible in this age of cuts to public education and have kept our finances and expenditures under control. For 17 years, you have been financially responsible to the taxpayers of this district, working with the board meet to provide a budget that was fiscally responsible, but not at the expense of students by sacrificing services or programs. You systematically and your systematic and precise budgetary preparation each year resulted in the ability to save $20 million, which provided the down payment on this $50 million project. And for that, I thank you. <clears throat> to the two women who run my office, Janet and Tammy, who I know are watching on the monitors, for keeping the office on track in every possible way, I certainly want to thank you two ladies. And to my right-hand person, well, excuse me, Vanessa Schrall, our Director of Education, who kept our ship straight and forging ahead academically. You, alongside with the administrative team, made sure that we didn't lose focus, and our number one priority was providing the best educational programs for students. For that and all of your hard work, I thank you. Finally, to my wife. Uh, I've done this 20 times and still I, I can't do it, but I'll do my best. To my wife and my children, Zach, Elaine, and Logan, for supporting me, uh, for supporting me always, but particularly those times when I didn't make it home in time for supper, which were many. For all those weekends I spent away from home working in my office. For understanding that even when I was home, but, in my, but my mind was working and thinking about this building project, I am grateful for your love and support, and want to publicly thank you. <laughs> Finally, as you can see, no one person, no single group of individuals, no specific organization can take credit for this achievement as a result of countless individuals spending thousands of hours working to create our one-of-a-kind structure, our future is cemented in a tradition of excellence. Every student, every staff member, every individual in here to share this moment, this is your time, this is your school. What began as a vision of a few will now, and with the help of many, become a reality for this community. This building will serve the educational needs of generations of children to come and also function 
as an epicenter for this great community. We have arrived. The day has come. The Forest Hills School District, no, the Forest Hills community will be able to reap the benefits of this facility. I am thankful to be, to con I am thankful for the continued honor for, of serving you as your superintendent and having the privilege to introduce you to this extraordinary building that encapsulates the work and dedication of so many talented individuals. As Nelson Mandela said, remember, celebrate milestones as you prepare for the road ahead. Let's continue the celebration at this time by the ribbon cutting ceremony. Mr. Russell, school board president, and 13 students representing each grade level with me will cut the ribbon. As you can see, each one of these students represents each grade level from pre-K on to 12, and it is my privilege with Mr. Russell on behalf of the board and the faculty and the students and everyone in the Forest Hills community to officially cut the ribbon with Mr. Russell. this time, I truly want to thank everyone, and I know I'll say it 10 more times today, I want to thank everyone for all your help over the last you know, 18 years since I've been here at Forest Hill School District, but especially for the last six for your dedication and commitment and your patience with me because I know at times it's been a little tough. So thank you, and anyone that is interested in touring the building from our uh, retirees, also our distinguished individuals sitting on stage, will meet you after the dedication. This does indeed conclude the dedication of the junior, senior high school to Forest Hills School District.